couple of arcade games there. But if I take you over here, I'm gonna turn the camera around, we've got some pinball machines. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty normal stuff. But uh, this is my friend Ralph Link, and he owns these machines. He's also got a collection of about 30 back at home, correct? And this is a Gottlieb Close Encounters of the Third Kind. But what's a little different with this, if we open it up, Ralph, inside there is a Raspberry Pi. So this is because the original board was essentially non-functional, is that correct? Yep, there's uh, there's chips in it from Rockwell called the Spider Chip, a 4-bit chip. Okay. There's around, I think, eight of them in the machine. Well, there's two of them on this original MPU board, or what would have been the original MPU board. And they basically go back because of over-voltage and stuff over time. Okay, so like many retro computers and Commodore 64s suffer from over-voltage problems yep. as well. This is no exception. So what what is new here and what is original inside here? Well, this is the original driver board. That's the original power board. And this what would have been the original MPU or CPU. So this is all a brand new board. Uh, this is actually running Linux and it's pulling the ROMs for the actual pinball out of PinMame. So you're basically flashing the SD card for that. Uh, this is sold as a kit and you actually sold all the components on. It's called a Lizzy, uh, Lizzy 1 system. They make a Lizzy 80 system as well for the system 80 pins, which are a little later version. Okay. And this is relatively new. I think he started doing this around a year ago. And it's actually a really cheap solution to replace these boards. It's around under 100 bucks for everything, including the Pi. So that's a Pi Zero, is that yep. correct? Yeah. How much are they running at now? I think they're like 60 bucks or something so like that. I can't remember. Crazy, huh? Yeah. And if you were to try and buy an original board instead of go the emulation route? The original boards actually don't even sell for much even working because people yeah. know they're going to fail. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're... Yeah. It's like buying into a bad investment. Exactly. And the, the other boards are, uh, the wine up in the States makes a board. I think there's this around a couple hundred bucks. And uh, Pascal Jan and a guy over in the UK uh, makes a board that replaces actually all three boards. But that's getting pricey now too with the exchange rate. So that's almost like $500 Canadian. So Wow. And if lot. you look at a machine like this in the States, like a fully running machine like this might cost you 800 bucks. So yeah. if you look at it, you're starting to pay more to fix it than it's actually worth if you if you sold it. Gotcha. Yeah. And we, we're getting a couple of comments already. We, one comment is, what sort of sorcery is this? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it is in a way, but isn't it fantastic that you can actually repair these old machines and bring them back to life yeah. using new technology and people are, still love them enough to create it's, that It's stuff? crazy that some people actually, it's kind of like the, you know, the Apple stuff. People actually take the time to go through and reprogram everything and reverse yeah. engineer it. And a lot of the work is done in terms of the programming because uh, same as main the PC stuff, all the pin name ROMs have been done for pinball stuff. So. Yeah. So what parts of this device is the Raspberry Pi actually powering? Uh, everything, basically, because so, it's, it's basically the, the programming. And you can actually, one thing you can actually do with this, now I've never done it because I've only had these in here for a few months, Yeah. is uh, you can actually connect to that over the network if you set it up right. and you've got like a web-based interface and you can test everything in the machine. Like I can fire that coil, I can fire that light, you can do everything, just click, click, click. So click. they'll just fire off yep. remotely? Yep. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. So it's an easy way to test it because traditionally you would have menus, uh, you use the buttons. The, the same way I would connect to a Raspberry yep. Pi, just Wi-Fi in yep. to the IP address. Yep. And then you've got the web-based interface exactly. on and that. Like I said, I haven't even tried it yet, but, that's, that's <laughs> but you know it's there. Yeah. So let's take a look at the board and take a little closer look. Can you talk us through the various components? I see, for example, you've got dip switches yeah. on the left there. So walk us through all the parts of this. I forget offhand within a manual in front of me what the dip switches do. That's all right, no ones. pressure. But uh, number one is actually you can set free play. So there's a lot more options here than you would originally have on your board. You can set free play, uh, you can set the number of balls, you can set uh, the levels for doing replays. It's always good to set your number of balls, <laughs> I find. Three's common. Three? Well, uh, that's unheard of, goodness me. I've been missing out all these yeah. years. All right. And the, the connectors, these are all the, the edge connectors. Normally these need to be pinned. They um, yeah. basically they get too loose over time. So that's one thing you normally do with this as well. But then these are just, these are the flash. So if they did updates to the firmware, and this is basically running Linux, I forget which version of it. Yeah. But you can, you know, if they upgrade the system, you can just flash the chips and then put all those new ones in as well. 
Now you said it's running Linux. Is that just the Pi is running Linux yeah. essentially, yeah. Yeah. just like any other Raspberry Pi Zero? Yeah. And the software that's, that you're flashing onto the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. um, presumably it's not RetroPie, it's something else. No, it's just it's just called the Lizzie 80 system. So you're just flashing their image and uh, right. you're updating it with the specific software for your specific machine. Yeah. Whichever you pull out of pin game. Like this is uh, Close Encounters and in uh, Joker Poker over there, it's the exact same thing, except you just flash it for Joker Poker instead of, uh, instead of this. And they've got those flash images by ripping them off the original ROMs? Yes, yep. All basically just about every pinball game, most of it has been dumped. Same thing as any cartridge or any, yeah. any emulation game or anything. See, I always knew about obviously MAME and you know, RetroPie, yep. but I had no idea that mechanical machines like pinball, yep. that they could actually, that there was a, an interest in that yep. as well and a market for that. Well, if you look at the newer stuff, like guys who <clears throat> build uh, visual pinballs, uh, yeah. they'll basically all the DMDs get ripped off of there so you've got all the animations and everything and that's that's if you've ever played the newer games like the pinball arcade stuff like yeah. a lot of that is just emulated realistically right? essentially that's Rather right isn't program. it yeah. and then you've got the ROMs here as you mentioned yep. uh, what's your process like what do you burn those in uh, I've got a uh, I forget it I forget what my reader is my reader is older than dirt to be honest with <laughs> you it's borderline Windows 95, but it's So not. it's retro. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. It's fine by me. Yeah. And then you download the, the ROM images and just flash those. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, they, he sells this as a kit you can buy, and you, you need to solder everything in the board yourself. He, yeah. I don't think he even sells it as a populated board, to be honest with you. Right. But he sells all the components with it. And I see here you've got a fat external sound card optional. Yeah. So what would that give you extra sounds or? I'm, us, I'm, I'll sound? be honestly, I'm not 100 percent sure on what you can do with this one. Yeah. But uh, a lot of them, they do new soundboards that are kind of like a little bit more upgraded sound because, like, kind of like the chips are going and stuff. Right. Like that. But one thing you can actually do with this is, essentially, with the way it's emulating, all the sounds in here are basically playing a wave file. So okay. off the bat, you can switch it to I forget how many System One games there. you can actually put your own waves in it. So, you know, this could be putting in Star Wars music or Harry Potter like music. I like it already. To, right? That's amazing. So you could put Super Mario sound effects yeah, into yeah. this. It could be, you know, you could be a one up in the sound every time you hit the hit the pop bumper. Yeah. How did the original generate sound? Like where were they those sound effects stored? It would have uh, would have come off the main board up here. But uh, that's that's gone now. So. And they would they would have been stored in a ROM yeah. essentially. Yeah, you essentially burn the ROM yeah. chips. And that original card would have probably looked a lot like this guy yeah, down here. Yeah, it's around the same size as that. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't have one here, but they're, yeah. Yeah. So would you be able to close this up and yeah. give us a quick sure. demo of this Raspberry Pi actually controlling a real pinball machine? Oh, yeah, don't kick out a ball in a minute. <laughs> See, see, this is the worst part about the older stuff like that. It dies on you sometimes. I'll turn this one on and you can see the boot sequence too. Yeah. Because up in the displays, right, this wouldn't come on like this. So this is the Lizzie 1 system. And then it shows you wait for oh, player cool. 1. Yeah. And it'll show you the actual title of the game there in a second. It's like boot sequence. It's a little yeah. slower than it would be if you turn a pinball. I love this. that they put the Lizzie 1 up on the original yeah. LED display. That's cool. And you could they actually make new displays too. They make digital uh, new LEDs, oh, like yeah? actual LED, not the old gas displays. Yeah. But this these ones are gas fired? Yeah. Essentially. So we're still booting. There we go. All right. All right. Let's see if I actually put it on the No, I didn't. Maybe one second. Let me get the key. See the joys of retro <laughs> computing. It happens to us all. Isn't that fantastic though? Let's take a look at this one. So this is Joe Capoca. Three balls per player. He was right. Yeah. Gosh. I feel inadequate now. <laughs> <laughs> and the company that made these is Gottlieb. Yeah, Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Gottlieb ones, which is a Columbia Pictures Industries company. Beautiful. So Gottlieb was actually the last, uh, the last of the pinball manufacturers to switch to solid state. The original old school ones, electromechanical ones, they were basically killing the market with those, or like doing really well. So that's a Bali there. Yeah. 
but Goat League was actually pretty pretty slow to do it. So their their new games are nothing more really than uh, slightly better than the electromechanical ones. So they were right. kind of losing the pinball battle at that time. Gotcha. But anyways, I got a coin on that now. All right. And this one actually has Joker Poker has the old uh, EM sounds. There. Oh yeah. So it actually uses chimes, where most of the newer ones don't use chimes anymore, it's all digital. Yeah. So this is inside, this is actually firing off, uh, it's a little solenoid, it's actually striking a little chime. In it. So the Raspberry Pi is firing off those, those yep. chimes. Yep, and so the playing <laughs> the it. sounds is telling it which, which, uh, which chime to hit, and I apparently suck at them a little <laughs> And I thought I was clever connecting an, a Raspberry Pi to an Apple IIe <laughs> original speaker. This thing actually has bells in it, with bells on This is actually a fairly desirable game too these days. Yeah. And how much would one of these run in this kind of condition, you know, fully working with a Raspberry Pi and all of that? So future proofed. Uh, uh, Canadian around two grandish maybe. Around, around two thousand Canadians, so like sixteen hundred <laughs> US. Like four dollars US. <laughs> it's not too good right now, huh? <laughs> well that is very cool. And then so these these two obviously don't have Raspberry Pi inside. Yep. And um, so these are the originals, but Essentially, they work exactly like the original machine. I just love that. You kind of resurrected them from the ashes. Yeah. Well, this is the, the back glass, and this is too. It's like the back glass was shot in this. Now, someone does make a repo of the back glass, but that's like, just they're like 200 bucks. So, this is actually just a, a vinyl sticker, as always in there. Now. Oh, okay. So, you You know, I didn't even notice. I guess really close up, it looks a little bit JPEGy or something. Yeah. But is that a word, JPEGy? Yeah, I don't it know. works. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ralph no Link, problem. for showing us your little collection here. Um, I was saying these are sort of Rosen from the Ashes, yeah. which reminds me of a video game over here, an arcade game, The Phoenix, which rises from the ashes. Uh, I suppose I should have a quick play of this, if it's even possible, with one hand. Let's stick a coin in. <laughs> Go on in. Sure. <laughs>